Hello, it's Chris Locke for First Light Optics and today's video I'm going to show you how to connect a DSLR or mirrorless camera to your Newtonian telescope for some imaging. The first thing you're going to need for your camera is something called a T-ring. And for my mirrorless camera here, it's quite a chunky thing like that. But if you've got a DSLR, it will be a bit thinner. And that's because there's a crucial thing if you're using something called a coma corrector, where you need to get the correct backspacing distance. But I'll talk about more of that in a moment. First of all, if you don't want to use a coma corrector at this stage, all you'd need to do is attach your T-ring to your camera. There's red dots that line up just like a lens. So it just attaches like that and it clicks into place. Just give it a wiggle to make sure it's properly on. And on the front of your T-ring, there's an M42 T-thread. So you could simply just use a T-adapter. In my case, I'm using a two inch focuser. So I've got a two inch T-adapter and that screws on the front there. and simply push fits into the focuser, tightening with the thumb screws. Now, you can image like that, but your Newtonian telescope has something called coma. So on your images, you may see that the stars towards the edge look quite blurred and warped, a bit like the warp drive on Star Trek, basically. So to get rid of that, kind of warp effect, we need to flatten out the optics, get rid of that coma. And to do so, instead of using the two inch nose piece T adapter, we can use a coma corrector. Here I've got a Barda multi-purpose coma corrector with a T thread on it. So just like the T adapter, it just screws on the front. The only difference really is this has got some glass in to correct for that coma. And yet again, it push fits into the focuser like that. Now, if you've got the correct back distance between the coma corrector and your sensor, then your stars will be nice and round to the corners of your frame. Typically it's 55 millimeters. And that's why your T-rings are different sizes depending on whether you've got a mirrorless camera or a DSLR. In a DSLR, the sensor's set back really quite far, 45 millimeters beyond the mirror box. But with a mirrorless camera like this, the sensor's quite far forward. The T-ring and the distance from the flange to the sensor makes 55 millimeters. So the T-rings are designed to help you achieve the correct bat space and distance to get nice round stars in the corner of your images. You can also take the opportunity to screw in a filter. For example, if you've got light pollution, you could screw in a Optolon L Pro like I've got here. So you can just simply screw that on the front. There's a thread for it. If I can get it the correct way around. There we go. And that, again, with your camera on, push fits into the focuser. When I'm setting anything like this up, I tend to use a hurricane blower to just blow everything as I'm setting up. And that reduces the chance of getting dust in your optical train, which can show something called dust bunnies on your images. But that's pretty much it, really. Just attaches like a lens, your T-ring, screw on your coma corrector, filter if needs be pop it into your focuser all the way. Anything push fit, you just need to be careful there's no kind of sag. And you'll know if there's any sag because you'll see kind of like one or two of the corners on your images will be different. It won't be equal all the way around. If you notice that the stars are warped all the way around your image and you're using a coma corrector, check out your backspacing because that may need tweaking. But if you've got one or two corners that look wonky, but your others look fine or different, then there's something asymmetrical going on, which is 
quite likely to be some kind of focus for SAG. So they're things to look out for. Now, once you've got your camera in the focuser, you're gonna to need to reach focus. So I tend to point the telescope at a bright star. I personally use a focus mask. This one's a star sharp focus mask. Put it on the front. Rack your focuser in and out with live view on the screen if you're using a DSLR or mirrorless until you can see the diffraction spikes and the bright star look equally spaced. There'll be six of them and you'll see them going sort of in and out like that. When they're equally spaced apart, then you've got good focus. Lock off your focuser at that point. I double check the focus as well once I've locked it off just in case it moves. And if you've not got everything set up running off a computer, controlled from a computer, you can plug in an intervalometer to your camera so you're not pressing the button on the actual camera, which is creating vibrations, which will make all your stars go wobbly again. So you can simply press the button remotely, set off exposures, and you could either use a simple trigger release, or this one's an intervalometer where you can program a bunch of exposures, for example, 20 times two minutes, and it would just you can just leave it to run and take those pictures. If you're using a refractor, for example, instead of a Newtonian, it's a very similar process, only you'd need a flattener instead of a coma corrector. Now, there's one thing to bear in mind, and that's not all Newtonian telescopes will reach focus with a camera. If you've got a focuser that's 1.25 inches, quite thin, and protrudes quite far out, usually found on the more entry-level telescopes, there's a good chance that's been set up to reach focus with an eyepiece and not a sensor that's set back into a camera body. So you'll struggle to get enough inward focus to actually achieve focus. You'll go all the way in and it's still not focused with that type of telescope quite often or not. Now, you can add a Barlow lens between the, the T adapter and your focuser to try and bring that focal point outwards. The only issue with that is it kind of negates being able to do deep sky imaging with a lot of telescopes because it doubles your, effectively doubles your focal ratio and your focal length, making your telescope a lot slower and longer and therefore not really suitable and fast enough for deep sky imaging. So it's okay for getting zoomed in effectively on the moon and planets using a bar though with a camera but not really for any kind of deep sky work. Some 1.25 inch focuses do reach focus with a DSLR or mirrorless camera, but they're few and far between, I find. So if you're unsure, just contact us at questions at firstlightoptics.com and we'll, we'll look into what telescope you've got and recommend from there. Okay, so that was a run through of how to connect your DSLR or mirrorless camera to your Newtonian telescope. Hopefully you found that useful. If you did, consider subscribing, giving us a thumbs up, and until next time, clear skies, eventually.